I welcome you back here to the small chapel in the bishop's residence. As you know, I was not able to celebrate this Mass with you last Sunday. Father J.D. Mathurin was the celebrant, and I'm grateful for his willingness to do that. But it's my delight and my pleasure again to be back with you for this virtual celebration of the Eucharist on this, the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And so let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. So that we might together more worthily enter into these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. With the angels and saints, we join in declaring God's glory as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot of, from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will, I will praise, praise your, your name, name forever, forever, my, my King, King and, and my, God. my God. I will extol you, O oh my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will, I will praise, praise your name forever, forever my, my King and my, and God. my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I, I will praise, praise your name forever, my King, King and my, my God. God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are, who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
If the spirit of the one who raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also. Through his spirit that dwells in you, consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live, accordingly, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Like many of you, at various times in my life, I have known great burdens. Certainly, like many of you, during these past few months, facing so many challenges, there have been many burdens unique to family life that you have shouldered. There have been many burdens unique to diocesan life and to being a bishop that I have shouldered. It's times like these that remind me the power of the Episcopal motto that I chose, comfort my people. It is God comforting me. It is God comforting you in the face of the unique or common burdens that we all carry. But we can ask ourselves, how are we to find comfort today? How do we find comfort in these challenging times? I do not need to remind you, we continue to struggle with a pandemic. We continue to struggle with racial unrest and dealing with the evil of racism. We continue to see violence as it unfolds around us. Political divisions, attacks against the sanctity of life, a general unrest in our country and unrest even in our world. Perhaps Today, the words of Jesus in our gospel resonate deeply within me and within you. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened. My dear friends in Christ, we know many burdens today. 
unique burdens to us, burdens that we carry together. But our Lord Jesus Christ promises in our gospel those wonderful words, and I will give you rest. Now, it's not rest tomorrow, or it's not rest next week. It's not rest in some indetermined future. Jesus says, I will give you rest today, now, in the present moment. I will give you rest. And let me add, I will comfort you. My dear people of God, Jesus is not saying today, just grit your teeth and bear it. I'll give you rest once you're through all of this. He's not asking us to just hold on until the end when all of this is hopefully somehow more resolved. Our Lord Jesus Christ is inviting us into the comfort and the rest that he has promised as we bear our burdens in the midst of strife, right here and right now, he desires to give us rest under the burdens that we carry. How do we do that? How do we who labor and are burdened experience this rest right now? Christ has promised it to us. He invites us to it. How do we claim it in the present moment? Jesus gives us the answer to that question, how do I find rest? He replies, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. We find rest today in the present moment by being yoked to Jesus Christ, by receiving the yoke from him, by receiving the crosses, we could say, which are specifically for us to carry as individuals or to carry as a community. Those crosses that are designated for us in our training to become the missionary disciple that we desire to be. We can often think that we have to carry our burdens, that we have to carry the cross or the yoke by ourselves. But that is not what Jesus says. We are to take on his yoke. We are to be in some ways like Jesus and Simon of Cyrene who carry the cross, who carry the yoke together. The yoke is easy and the cross is light, not because it has no weight. They are heavy, but my friends, they are light because Jesus is strong. I cannot carry the yoke alone. It is in fact too heavy, but together carrying Jesus's yoke carrying the cross. Because Jesus is strong, the yoke feels easy and the burden is lighter. I remember listening to a bishop who once said very wisely, I do not so much fear the cross as I fear my own ability to carry it. I think that's true. The fear that we have with regard to crosses and burdens are not the cross or the burden. It's a fear that, can I carry it? What I am afraid of is that it might be too heavy for me. I do not so much fear the cross as I fear my own ability to carry it. But the Lord does not leave us to carry our cross or our burden alone. He never will. The burdens are heavy and the cross is heavy, but they are lighter because Jesus is strong. We are yoked to him as we carry our cross, as we carry our burden. How then 
Can we carry this burden with Jesus Christ? With him by our side, how do we claim the rest that he has promised in being yoked to him? We go back to something that we already know. It is necessary that we sit with the Lord in silence. Silence, taking time to be with Christ, is a powerful reality. Blaise Pascal once said that, and I quote, all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly alone in his room. Let's say that again. All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly alone in his room. I think Blaise Pascal meant to reflect and to think in that quiet and to open ourselves to the voice of God and his guidance and direction. I know a monk who once said, if you cannot be alone with yourself, then please do not impose yourself on other people. There's a wisdom to that. If I cannot sit alone with myself, if I do not enjoy my own company, the question is, should I impose myself on other people? To think that that is sound advice. In seeking the rest and the comfort that Christ has promised us as we bear our burdens, whatever they are, we must learn to welcome silence in being alone. I can ask myself and I can ask you, when was the last time I really entered into the silence to listen to the Lord, to listen to the Lord? And if we are alone most of the time because the circumstances of our life dictate that because of isolation or other reasons that we are alone most of the time, during that time are we lost in our own thoughts or is there a time when we listen to God and listen to the Holy Spirit? Even if we live alone, are we always lost in our own thoughts or do we quiet ourselves silence our hearts and listen to the Lord. It is in the silence that we hear the voice of God. It is in the silence that we are refreshed and Christ assures us of his presence with us as we are yoked with him, yoked to him and carry the cross. It is in the silence where we give to Jesus Christ the opportunity to help us to overcome our own self-imposed yoke or thoughts. For a yoke, for a yoke that is united to him, a yoke that we carry with him together, a burden that is, yes, heavy, but light, for Christ is strong. My dear friends, we should take some time every day, even if it's just five minutes, perhaps on your back porch in the morning, your office at lunchtime, your parish church outside of mass times. Remember, our churches are open for private reflection. And even if you are not able to attend mass and make use of this televised mass, there may be a time when outside of mass times you might pop into the church and just be silent with the Lord to listen to him. We need to take time to open our minds and our hearts in spite of all that we are facing and all of the burdens that we are carrying as individuals, as a community, as a nation and as a world, we need to take time to listen to the voice of Christ. So, turn off the news, silence your cell phone, take five minutes 
to just acknowledge the presence of Jesus Christ with you and to ask him to help you to always realize that together with him, yoked to him, he is strong and our burdens are therefore lighter. Let yourself be with Jesus, sharing the yoke or the cross and experiencing his comfort and rest. Come unto me, the Lord says. Let us go to him, listen to his voice, to know his comfort and to arise renewed and strengthened to bear the burden and the cross yoked to Jesus Christ. I go back to what the bishop said. I do not so much fear the cross or the burden as I fear my ability to carry it. When we take time with the Lord, we need not fear the cross. We need not fear the burden, for we shall truly know the one who carries it with us, strengthening us and making our burdens and our crosses and our yokes that much lighter. Amen. As one family in faith, together we profess the faith of our baptism. And so we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through, Through him all, all things, things were made. made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God is here present with us and trusting in his presence and rooting ourselves in his love and promises to us. Let us make known to him these areas of our need. For the whole Christian people, let us beseech the abundance of divine goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who do not yet believe, let us implore the giver of all spiritual gifts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office, let us call upon the power of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For favorable weather and abundant fruits from the earth, let us entreat the Lord, the ruler of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who cannot be present at this sacred assembly, let us beseech him who observes all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, let us call upon the judge of all humanity. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who pray in faith and ask the mercy of the Lord, let us entreat the compassion of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and those close to us who await the Lord's goodness, let us call upon the mercy of Christ the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, may we be spared all loss of life and property during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in you, as always, we place our hope and our trust. In your kindness, hear us, and in your mercy, answer us. For these and all things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May, may the, the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your, at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we proclaim the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm very much aware that this is the July 4th weekend, so as we celebrate again the independence of our country, let us together pray a Hail Mary, asking the Lord to bless our country, to bless its leaders, and to bestow God's grace and peace upon us, as well as God's healing in these very difficult days. And so for our country, we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, women and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. May God bestow his blessing and grace, his healing in so many ways upon the United States. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this celebration of the Eucharist. As always, I ask your prayers for me as I promise my prayers for you. I ask your prayers for your parish community. And I also ask you to remember to assist your parish in the stewardship of finance. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you this day and always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.